Okay, wait. Wait. We'll speak, talk. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Rachel, what's How up? Are How are you? I'm so excited to talk. I feel like I haven't talked to you in a long time. I know. I was trying to remember the last time we actually probably talked was on your wedding day. <laughs> I know. Crazy. <laughs> years ago which is so crazy i know um sorry somebody said they can't hear me with headphones i'm gonna take okay. this out okay. okay let's try this again okay okay let's see i can still hear you okay good yeah i don't know I, there's nothing else going on in my house right now so i apologize if you can't hear <laughs> me i'm so sorry okay good it's better now yay i was explaining before you got on that i've been doing these lives with wedding planners and i've had set questions to ask them and all of that. But of course, I just wanted to chat with you. Yes. So we, I have no set questions. <laughs> this is my first Instagram live. I've never gone live on Instagram. Wow. Which I, feel I feel so honored to have Rachel um, <laughs> going live with me. So um, amazing. And I have to tell you, Rachel, I'm not kidding. It's pro probably once a month, I'll go somewhere and they'll be like, Oh my God, you shot. Um, Rachel, and they can't say your last name, of course, because it's tough. And I'm like, Alton Wright, they're like, oh yeah, you shot her weddings? Oh my God, the photos are amazing. So all oh, that's sweet. I had no idea when you booked me that you were this huge, you know, vlogging sensation. And of course now I, I know, um, <laughs> but I, it's cute, yeah. I love it. Well, when I it was like what a year out from the wedding because you also did our engagement photos because when we booked i booked you as like a whole thing for the whole weekend which i loved um and i feel like that was kind of at the beginning of my like youtube career almost and then i think from then like planning for the wedding i kind of grew a little bit and then um after the wedding obviously and then people started seeing the photos and stuff but it was so fun i like miss the wedding prep time of life but now we're like growing a baby I, over here i know <laughs> and I want to talk about all of it honestly I really want to I've never had a chance to talk to a bride really about their wedding after the wedding and I, I don't want to talk about it for a long time but I kind of want to get your take on the process of planning versus the wedding day and like your stressors and maybe maybe you can help some other brides that are on here I actually have some of my future brides on here right now uh, watching so what would you what's like a big suggestion or a tip you would give to people planning a wedding um i would say at first i like had no idea what i was doing luckily i had my sister my older sister who had just gotten married like a year and a half ish before me so i immediately went to her and i was like what do i do first i think it's kind of just narrowing down i think the most important is like the venue getting that secured and then the things like getting the dress because I got married kind of post COVID. So everything was a little bit back ordered. So dresses were taking a long time to come in and then securing like photographer and stuff, because obviously the dates book up years in advance at this point. Um, so if you're wanting to have a shorter engagement, I would say like right away, book your main things. Um, but I still get a ton of like questions and stuff about weddings these days. And I always tell like any bride, I'm like, do not stress the small stuff because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Cause now that I look back, I remember kind of stressing about like, Oh, what color lanterns? What are the what are the tablescapes gonna look like? And like during the wedding, I didn't even like remember that part. Obviously, you did a great job at capturing the pictures and like seeing all that after. But during your wedding, you're just like so in the moment, so happy to like it's such a long day that you're so happy to finally be with your husband and get to see all your friends and family in one spot that I think it's just like special to worry about the actually important stuff. And then when you go back and look at the photos and stuff like that, obviously it's fun. But I say just like kind of narrowing down the main topics the vendors things like that and it kind of just falls into place so such great advice and i love that you had was it your friends vlogging for you yes my friend, she came and she when we were taking the pictures of me getting in the dress and my mom in the room and stuff she was she started filming and then it was really special because i was gonna hire a videographer but i obviously do content creation for a living so i wanted to like make something a little bit more special and more personal to like my style of video so i had her capture like i think she had like over four hours on two memory cards for me she was so sweet to like do that throughout the day and the night and then um after we got back from our honeymoon i sat down and it was fun because i now have all of the footage that i feel like i wouldn't have had if someone else were to captured it for me um so i'm very lucky i always tell brides i think nowadays there's like services where 
you can hire like specific just like instagram content people that will capture that kind of side and then you can hire the like you like your job the professional to get both it's kind of fun i feel like nowadays with social media you want to like share your stuff on tiktok and share your stuff over on instagram and it's fun to have a lot of content just like on your phone a hundred percent that was I, nice i don't do content creation but i do have the option of adding that onto my packages now yeah so i have someone that, oh, that comes and does it with me because most of my brides are like you they're all young in their 20s and tiktok instagram they're that's huge for them um whereas if 35 year old 40 year old like me is maybe not yeah. as interesting but and you um, can't do both it's no, hard no. to do like to know both at once so it's nice to have the extra hands to like hold that iphone or the right. vlog camera or something like that well she was so sweet and great to work with so yes um, she's I actually love aged right now so she's getting married this coming up summer oh my god yeah. i'm like i want to return the favor and like film some stuff i was stuff gonna say her. are you gonna yeah. film for her yeah. she's getting married the month <laughs> my due date so i'm I'm like hoping oh I'll I mean I'll still make it but we'll see how it goes wow <laughs> are you tell are you sharing your due date yes it's June 1st <laughs> excuse me oh. I still have a cough sorry You're fine. June 1st oh yeah. my gosh yeah. June 1st so I'm like I'm I don't know her having a boy I don't know if he'll come a little bit early like be a May baby I'm kind of hoping for a May baby we have a lot of like I, my birthday's May, our anniversary's May, my parents' anniversary's May. So there's a lot going on in May. So I think it could be fun to add. Oh, it'll be May. I yeah. Lil <laughs> Libby came, my little girl came three weeks early. Oh, okay. Um, so, oh yeah, it's definitely possible. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people say with your first, you go full term, if not past. So I guess we'll see. But I feel like he's already very active. Like he started kicking pretty early. Like a lot of people, like you'll feel kicks around. I don't know. When did you start feeling? Her um oh my gosh I don't even remember yeah <laughs> Libby was it's so funny I felt like I knew her personality when she was inside of me she was so active I, I, and wild yeah. and wild um which she is now she's so much fun and wild but I could tell when she was inside of me I mean she would dance and kick yeah. and like all the time it was insane it's so crazy the first time i felt him kick it was um new year's dylan and i were sitting on the couch and i was like the first time it's so faint that you're almost like what was that and mm -hmm. then he kept doing it and i was like don't put your hand on my stomach and tell me if you feel what i'm feeling he's like oh, oh my god <laughs> that that is the best part of, of pregnancy i thought that was the best part is feeling a baby inside of you it's weird at the same time but it's yours right so it's not it's crazy. Yeah. It's such a beautiful thing. I mean, I've experienced just like, I mean, this is my first time being pregnant. It's so crazy to watch your body change and like be able to grow a baby. It's just like the most beautiful thing, but also like the most exhausting let's thing. Talk, I'm like, I feel, yeah. Let's talk about this. What you're so, you're so stunning, obviously, and you're into fitness and, and style and all of that. Real talk, like how, how was that getting pregnant and, and seeing your body change? Yeah, I think it's hard um, if you share a lot of your life on the internet because nowadays I feel like, especially like with YouTube, you can't really hide much. Like an Instagram picture, you could like pose or change the angle or something to kind of hide that little bump that's starting to form. But with YouTube, it's so real and the content can't really be edited. So I found it a little bit trickier to hide it. I think a lot of people were starting to kind of guess, but I wanted to keep it a secret to just Dylan and I and family as long as we could, just to make sure that we were having a healthy pregnancy. Yeah. Um, but once I released like the information and like let people know, it was much easier, but I will say it was hard to watch and it still is hard to watch my body change just because I am so into like fitness and fashion and that's always been kind of my thing that like, now I can't just wear any brand of clothes or like put on any outfit every day. I'm like, it's starting to get harder and harder to dress. Yeah. And I feel like my job is to share fashion content and do that. So I've been a little bit more quieter, I feel like on the internet, but I'm also trying to give myself grace and like rest and realize that this is like my health and like growing a healthy baby is first over like posting an Instagram photo. Yeah. So I'm still working, still like getting content out there, but I've just, I like to adjust my content to like what is obviously going on in my life. So right now is maybe a slower paced life. Like I'm not going on many brand trips. I'm not traveling as much like I used to. I'm just kind of like chilling at home and just taking the time to appreciate the slowness before life gets kind of crazy. <laughs> well, good for you, man. I had such a hard time. I don't know if maybe 
as I was older, but I'm, I'm super into fitness and I was running like six miles a day. So it was a huge yeah. adjustment for me as well. Like, and it's, you know, cause you don't really know, like, there's certain exercises that maybe are healthy for the baby that you should be doing. And then there's some exercises where it's like, it's not really great to go do like a hard hit workout right. that might be best for the baby. So sometimes I find myself the first half of my pregnancy, I'm, I'll be 26 weeks Friday, but I feel like I was really hard on myself mentally about the whole working out thing. And then finally one day I was like, I'm just going to go on walks, try to keep moving my body, but I'm going to give myself a little bit of grace. I'm like, the body image will come back eventually but i'm like right now i need to worry about like the health of the baby and making sure that i'm like resting yes but it is hard if you're used to like i mean before the wedding i was going into the gym every day right. and i was like in shape ever right. and kind of just and it's hard too because i'm someone who as much as everyone says like you work out for your mental health yes but i also am someone who i work out if i have like something to look forward to like first for sake the wedding um and I was like really into like getting into shape for the wedding and feeling my best self mm -hmm. because that's such a big event in my life. But now I'm like, not that I'm like, what's the point of working out? But you just see yourself getting bigger every oh, day. Yeah. And it's kind of like, well, these walks aren't really doing much because, you know, it's kind of hard to see your body change. But at the same time, I know that my body, like that's, this is what our bodies are made to do. And I know that it will go back to normal eventually. And I'm just trying to like appreciate what my body can do and give me. So a hundred percent. And you're doing better than 90% of people. I mean, I could barely walk at your point. I mean, I was still shooting weddings, but I was like kind of hobbling. Yeah. <laughs> it's harder to get my socks on. Like this morning, yeah. I'm like, the, this was the first day I was like, wait, it's getting a little bit harder to put my socks on. Yeah. But I will tell you, you are, you're gonna, you're so young, you're gonna snap back super quickly. Like probably, you know, yeah. you really, you're going to. My, it's, you know. my husband wants little kids, so I'm like, he's like, maybe we'll just do them all in a row. I'm like, no, 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 I need a second Woo! to get my body. <laughs> oh Lord, no, y'all, y'all are gonna have lots of kids, I think, too. So um, I'm, ex I'm thank excited for you. I think it's great. Thank you so much. And I am excited to see the pictures and. Yeah and all of the things but y'all live yeah. in nashville yes currently in nashville dylan coaches at vanderbilt and then obviously i just work from wherever so we're in nashville right now which is nice we're close close enough to family dylan's family is about three and a half hours and then my parents are in florida which is about like seven and a half but we can drive to both which i'm thankful for so so talking about florida let's talk about 30a did you guys buy some property we bought that property um, near my parents. We're actually like four lots down from my mom and dad's house. Oh so we're, we're going to try to hopefully build on that soon. But it's about like an hour and a half drive from 30A. Okay. So pretty much to go in and out as we want. But um, where my parents live, it's just a little bit more calm. And you can like drive on the beach, have fires on the beach, not as many people. I feel like 30A is such a beautiful place to visit. Um, but it's kind of getting to be super packed the more and more people find out about it. So we found like a cute little spot to be near my mom and dad. Hopefully one day we can like ma make it a rental house or like a second home for like us to bring the kids to vacation and things like that. So we're excited. Oh, I, I love it. Thinking ahead for fa more family time. And by the way, when people say, oh, your pictures are so pretty from Rachel's wedding, I'm thinking, oh, her she's great and beautiful, but her family was amazing. Oh. I, I say that immediately. I'm like, Oh, but she was just really fun and her family was so great to work with. So your family is so I great. I mean. For the day of, I was like, I'm so sorry. Because some, at some points during the day, it would be so chaotic. People are screaming at each other. I'm like, this is just how our family rolls. Because Dylan has a big family and so do we. So it's just like chaos. But I'm like, that's all That's all we really know. I so loved <laughs> I loved it. And having to hit the little thing on your on the door before the oh my God. alarm. <laughs> so crazy. I remember. <laughs> I mean, I get it for the same of like the yeah. kids i think the thing for any rental home there you like have to have that so i bet you've gotten a lot of questions on where that house was i've gotten a lot of questions on where that house was yes I mean, it was the perfect getting ready house i think um it was for those of when we booked it i didn't even think like oh this is where we'll take majority of the photos like i didn't even like think about that but then once we got into it and we checked into it i was like wait this will be so perfect so i got it off of vrbo i try to go on there all the time and find the link to like send to people but for some reason i can't find it and i don't know if it's because it's already like booked up Probably. um but if anybody from you, <laughs> you should have gotten a kickback from that I... brbo person <laughs> <laughs>
fun though. I like how we made a weekend out of it. It was like, a, it was like the perfect house. It fit a lot of people. It was nice to have like all the bridesmaids staying in the house and stuff like that. So it was fun. Yeah. For those of you, everybody's like, I love you, Rachel. But for those of you who haven't seen her wedding photos, her getting ready house was this white, all white, right? Big archway, yeah. perfect framing, perfectly framed shots for me. It made my job really easy. So thank you. <laughs> of course. As far, all right. I want to talk about blogging content creation i want to know how did you start this i know you were in college but tell me how this all started so i was in college i think it was like middle of my junior year of college going into senior year um and i grew up loving youtube i would always watch youtube over like a tv show or anything like that i just always loved the youtube world like lifestyle it used to be more of like sit down videos like get ready with me what's in my purse like stuff like that and i would watch it all the time um, and then it's slowly nowadays, it's turning into more like vlog lifestyle. I think people just like to see day to day content like that. So um, when I started, I was a little bit shy and worried about what everyone would obviously have to sure. say weirdo on YouTube, you know, so I begged my parents for a vlog camera in college, I ended up getting one for Christmas. And then not that you have to have a vlog camera to start, you could easily start on your iPhone. But um, they got me this camera that all the YouTubers had, I was super excited about it. And then I posted maybe two or three videos like throughout the span of five to six months because I was a little bit embarrassed. And then finally, COVID hit and I had to move in with my sister because every like, sc like school was shutting down. It was my senior year. I finished up my senior year, like my capstones and stuff online. And so I was just living with my sister. There wasn't really much to do. Everything was like closed up. And I was like, I'm going to take this seriously. So yeah. <laughs> Or was hiring I was like I need to find a job like I love doing this and I never really thought of it as like it would become an income but it was something that I really enjoyed and I was bored around the house so I started doing that and then I think just because everyone was online like everyone had nothing to do but like watch movies watch YouTube stuff like that my channel just kind of started to grow and I would post content of just like literally my family what we would do going to the grocery store like nothing crazy and it kind of just started to grow, which was exciting for me. Um, and then I ended up going to Florida and doing a ton of Florida content during COVID as well. I got a dog during that time. And then I ended up moving in with Dylan. And then at that point, I had signed with a management company, which was exciting for me. And I started to like slowly work with some smaller brands. Um, and now it's what I do full time. And I am with different management now. And it's just been so nice to be able to work with brands that I like truly love and use. And it's so crazy that it's what I do for a living because I would have pinched my like teen self in high school and early college like knowing this is what I do and it really does work out great because we move a lot for Dylan's job and it's a nice career for me to be able to just like pick up and move around and go so I'm very thankful for it but sometimes I I enjoy it so much that I don't really even think about it as it's like my job but it just is so I feel right better. yeah I I am just like in all of you, honestly, I think you're so smart, first of all. Thank you. <laughs> and I honestly didn't even know you were successful until somebody did a speech at your wedding and and were, was talking about you and how successful you were as a vlogger. And I was like, oh my God, this is a, I'm, this is a celebrity, honestly. No. no, but seriously, I just think you're so smart and I love kind of um, supporting women and their journeys and in business and I think it can be harder for women to succeed in business in that we, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but people call us bossy or aggressive or all these things. And I think, you know, it takes that sometimes to get to where you are, where I am. And I think it's just important to applaud other women. And I'm just so, I'm so proud of I you. Think <laughs> fun. I think that a lot of, I think with nowadays post COVID with everyone like more so working from home and I think the whole office thing is kind of maybe fading out and it is kind of a more popular thing for people to start doing things that they're really passionate about and making their like passion project into a career and yeah. it's a really fun people succeed and I love rooting for others. I mean, the internet is there's a spot for everyone, you know, that's not just like, oh, well, there's five successful YouTubers, so I can't do it. And I kind of always just kind of thought oh, uh, well, people already do YouTube. I could, I like, there's, I couldn't do it. But if you're someone who's watching or whatever that you, you want to start doing content creation, like just start because I feel like you never know what can happen until you start, especially now with like short form content coming out, like Instagram reels, TikTok, like there's so much content out there that it's like, what's one more person, right? you know? So 
if well, I was I was listening to a podcast. Yeah, that's such great advice. And I was listening to a podcast that said long form content, like what you do, vlogging, is the next and will continue to be the yeah. next, like best career move you can have um, if you want to be an entrepreneur. So yeah. you're uh, you're way yeah. out of the game. <laughs> What was the first step if somebody wanted to get into it, um, vlogging specifically or YouTube content creation? What's the first step they do? What do they do? Um, I would say, well, one, well, sometimes people will like kind of blow up now. I feel like it, it was easier to maybe blow up back then, but now that there's a lot of content out there, it's kind of more slow growth, which is fine. I mean, everyone's different. Some people blow up, some people have slow growth. Um, but I think it's like finding something that you're passionate about. Like I love my family and just showing like the reality of my day-to-day -day life. Some people are into fitness. Some people love cooking. So it's really just finding what you like, but I feel like through the camera people can tell your authenticity and it's like if you if i go on there and i try to show and be like a personal trainer that's just not me so people are gonna be like what is this girl doing you know type of thing so you kind of have to make sure whatever you're doing is what you love and my dad always told me growing up like do what you love for your job and you'll never work a day in your life and i always think about that because i'm like i always try to keep my content like what i actually do in a day-to-day -day and what i actually enjoy and love and i think that that helps to stay authentic and your, your audience can definitely see it even though you can edit it and whatever your audience can see through like lies and all that kind of stuff so i would just say find what you love stick with it and at first you're not gonna like first tiktok maybe it'll blow up and get like 10 million views and there's your next career but um just stick with it and if you're not gaining traction at first just keep up with it keep up with it i mean i did youtube for i think about a year and a half two years before i even saw like one dollar come into my account so yeah um, I think if you do it because you love it, it will end up working out in the end. So it sounds like do what you love and consistency. Keep yes. keep doing it. Keep putting it For out sure. there is the key. Right? I think, and I think that's the key, the key with everything. I think it's the key with photography. Yes. Um, anything you love, just keep doing it and your people will follow you, yes. right? For yeah. For sure. As long as long as you're genuine and authentic. I was talking with my friend Reagan last week on her podcast about it. And I think I can only speak from the photography or wedding world and that people tend to put out what they think they should be putting out as far as content. And it doesn't necessarily get them the followership or clients that they want. Um, and I have found, I've been doing this for 17 years and I've been doing what I like for 17 years and it just works, right? You find me, other brides find me that kind of relate to me and it just works for everyone. Everyone has their, their tribe. And yes. if you put yourself out there, you will find you yes. right? So it's kind of like I found you because, well, I found you through a friend. Um, you did Kenzie's wedding. Yes. I was, uh, friends with her in college. And I remember seeing her photos and I just thought, oh, these are, because I liked how you did film and then also regular photography. Mm -hmm. And I was like, these look very different from like the over edited, over exposed like stuff I was seeing. And so it's like, if you try to build your brand and business around what everyone else's photos look like, then maybe you wouldn't have stuck out, you know? So it's like, if I'm going on here sharing like, maybe exactly what another content creator is sharing. Yes, there's a lot of lifestyle vlogs, but no one's like day-to-day -day life is the same. So if you're just like true to yourself, if you stay true to like the photos and stuff that makes you happy, then you'll find the right people that want to support you. hundred so. percent. Somebody's asking what kind of camera do you use? I don't know if they're talking to me. I think they're talking to you. Yeah, so I use, I started the camera that my parents got me was the Canon G7X, which is a great camera. Um, you can get it on Amazon. I think I got mine at Best Buy. They literally sell them everywhere. But also I think it's around, the price I'm sure has gone up. I think it's like a six or $700 camera. Um, but you could easily nowadays, I feel like iPhone, the quality of the camera is so good that you could easily start on your camera. Um, I really don't even have a ton of camera equipment. Like I just will film, if I forgot my camera that day, I'll film on my iPhone or I'll film on the Canon or I have a different one. It's like a Canon M50, I believe is the name of it. Um, I'll just throw it in my purse, but I, I, I like right now I have you stacked on like three candles. I don't have like a tripod yeah. or like that. I just kind of go with the flow with it. I feel like a lot of people think you need like this huge ring light and this like tripod and this like whole setup, but it's really just, if you're wanting to do lifestyle, it's really just pulling the camera out day to day with like showing what you're doing. So I love that. I think it's great. You don't need a ton of equipment. I'm mm -hmm. kind of the same way. I actually just invested in this little light that is pointing at me right now because I didn't want to move my desk anymore to do these lives to be in front of a window. So it was just out of necessity. I honestly. know. But 
it's the same with wedding photography. You don't need 20 amazing cameras. Like mm -hmm. if you have an eye and you, you know what you want to capture, like you don't need all the fancy stuff. You really don't. Yes. Did you but, start on camera? I think that, I think that comment was asking about your, you too. They said both oh. of you. Um, I do have, I have a lot of cameras, but, uh, my camera, but I'm actually packing up right now for an engagement session in Palm beach tomorrow okay. and flying out in the morning. I'm taking my Sony a one with a 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter lens. And then I'm also taking my contact film camera, um, which I shot a lot at your wedding and some portrait 400 film with that. I also have this really fun point and shoot that I bring out of the end of the shoots now that I shoot with. Um, and I also have my drone, which I didn't have for you. Fun. That's so fun. Uh, it's just a different perspective. Yeah. And I like to do a fun little video at the end of every shoot, uh, especially engagement shoots now. That's just kind of vibey and romantic. And I put a little uh, music yeah. to it. It's just for Instagram. And it's really just for me. Um, cause it's fun because I like to be creative. Um, yeah. but I wish I had it at your wedding. It wasn't even drone photography. wasn't even mm -hmm. huge then for weddings and this was that was just a couple years ago so crazy see how things change so quickly like now it, like i'm sure in a few years it'll be different too there'll be a new thing or a new thing that everyone wants and I at their it. wedding i love it i actually love being pushed creatively i actually had a a, a woman i want to say girl a woman who's in her 20s reach out to me about a month ago and she actually sent some of your photos some of your like iphone photos as inspiration <laughs> And we did a fun shoot at my house and then on the beach with like direct flash okay. and all this fun stuff. I love it. I, I think one thing people look at my Instagram or website and think I only do this one thing. And I think it is better to market yourself doing one thing, but I love as an artist, I love being creative and playing with light and, and different things. So, um, but I, I, yeah, I don't know why I said that, but. <laughs> I like the changing of the tides. Yes. I like the changing of, of trends and things. I'm always going to shoot my classic like editorial vibe pictures, yeah. which is, um, but why people love you and they love I, you. It's like your thing. You know? It's my thing. Yeah. That's my thing. But I also love shooting the like trendy flash stuff too. Now yes. it's, it kind of gets me out of my comfort mm -hmm. zone, which as an artist is fun. For right. sure. Yeah, I know. I flash like even like, um, the camera, <laughs> talking about for vlogging a lot of people buy it now and they use the flash like at night and they'll do like sunset beach photos and it really does take really nice pictures too so if you're wanting to get that camera um it's great for photos too i think someone asked about how i edit i think that's where they said that they have issues um i use final cut pro it's like the best software you have to do it on an apple computer i feel like a lot of people have macs these days but you could also do like imovie it comes free with um MacBooks, but the Final Cut Pro, I think it's like two ninety nine or three ninety nine, and you pay a one time fee, and then that's that. And I've been using it since college, so it's. Do I you use iMovie to edit? No, I'll use Final Cut Pro. I oh, use, Final, use Cut Pro. Okay. Final Cut Pro, um, and I just found like a huge difference. They just have like more text options, and it's just like easier to use, in my opinion. And everything that I've like learned about editing, I've always I feel like it's like a daunting task at first. Like you're like, oh my god, I don't know how to do it. It's probably the same with photos. Mm -hmm. um, you just like teach yourself like if there was ever a question I had or I was confused on like what button to use where in the editing software I would literally just YouTube it like YouTube has every answer if you need some 100% I use YouTube all the time yeah yeah all the time. <laughs> yeah so cool I, I mean I love everything your mom said y'all look alike I'm so proud of you both that's very sweet I have a I do have a filter on mama Linda um and your daughter does not so uh <laughs> thank you <laughs> My first live i'm like i at first i was like wait how do i even join this and then i like i don't even know you can put a filter i'm like probably you should. can and i always do because i am a mom and i don't have a ton of time to get ready anymore so <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure i'll learn that quickly so well you did great i'm so having... thankful to have you on here by the way is there anything that you want to share about a partnership that you're doing or anything if not that's fine. um i'm kind of just laying low right now i'm working on a little secret project which will hopefully come out um this year i'm not going to say when because i thought it would come out last year but we've run into a few technical difficulties but it's something i'm really passionate about and i really love so that will hopefully be coming soon but right now just laying low getting ready for the baby um like an exciting change big change in life coming and just kind of hanging out so. oh 
I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Before we help off, how can people follow you, find you? Where are you? So it's just Rachel Ottenreath everywhere. I oh, actually know it's Rach Ottenreath. So YouTube is my full name. Instagram is what obviously we're on here. And then like TikTok and stuff, it's all the same. So a lot of times, though, if you search my old last name, like Rachel Racky, it still pops up because I have a lot of content under that name out on the internet. So it's funny. Yeah. Everyone's always like, I have no idea how to say your last name. And I'm like, I know sometimes I, I have to like double check when I type it in like that I'm spelling it right because it's such a long yeah. last name. Now I'm like, I used to go to some from something so easy to something a little bit more complex, but it's okay. <laughs> well, thank you for clearing it up yeah. for us. I'm so excited for you guys. Thank you so of much. Course. Thank you for having me. I'm glad you asked me if to be on. If there's anything I can ever help you with, let me know. Yes, and... if you check out Julie's page. She's the best. And she is so fun for wedding stuff. She goes with the flow, which we love. So, yes. Well, you are amazing to work with. And I thank you. Thank you, Miss Linda. She was on here very supportive. <laughs> and um, we'll talk soon. Yes. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye.